Chair recognizes the Honourable the Member for Harbour Grace Port Grave. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, it's always an honour, of course, to stand in our place here in this Honourable House, the House of Assembly, our Newfoundland Labrador Legislature, to represent the people who elected us. I represent the strong district of Harbour Grace Port Grave, and I got to say, I had a great weekend on the ground at many community events, of course, throughout my district from Bishop's Cove, Bay of Roberts, Harbour Grace, you name it. It's always a good time in Harbour Grace Port Grave. And uh, just to quickly refer to the, my, my colleague opposite there, who I consider a good friend, Farmer Jim, a.k.a. Um, he, he made a comment, of course, about uh, not looking after our vulnerable, po vulnerable population. Be further from the truth. Well, I have to say, and I can only speak for myself here on this, on this side of the House, um, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, that uh, I can say the same, the argument was the same thing for the vulnerable young student population in Colus Point Primary. That's right. Look for years, him. we know. Mr. Speaker, that promises have been made. Money has been allocated by the previous administration, but nothing materialized, Mr. Speaker. Shocking. And we talk about a vulnerable population. I would argue that our youngest, our youngest students, as well as our seniors, are indeed the most vulnerable members of our society. Well, I'm happy to say that it's this government and, 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 I'm, and I'm grateful that it's happening in, in my time as MHA, as, as everybody going to attest to here in this House. I talk about it every time I stand in this Honourable House, and I'm happy to say that our government has awarded $16.2 million to JMJ Holdings for the company. It's a Newfoundland Labrador company, of course, that are going to t take action. I'm told that start physical tomorrow. work could start tomorrow, right from the minister's mouth, Mr. Wow. Speaker, right here. So we can expect good work to begin, and that's long overdue school, overdue school replacement. Uh, the student population varies between 350 to 400 in that area. It services children all the way from Port Grave, Hibbs Cove, Baranead, Bay Roberts, Coley's Point, Shearstown, Butlerville, some from Clark's Beach area. Um, Bay Roberts, of course, uh, attend that school. That's, their, that's the feeder school right there. That's where they start. A lot of my friends have their children currently enrolled at Coley's Point, and I'm happy to say I visit the school frequently, but you know what? I look forward to visiting that new building with the doors scheduled to open in 2021. So let's bring that on. Can't here, wait here. to see that physical work begin on Coley's Point Primary School replacement. It's going to be located on Eric Dodd Drive, which is adjacent to Amalgamated Academy in Bay Roberts, another great school, another great educational facility in the strong district of Harbour Grace, Port Grave, Mr. Speaker. And there are more students at Amalgamated Academy uh, than there are at Ascension Collegiate, the high school there in the area. So let me tell you, uh, there's a lot, lots of learning, lots of bright minds that will come out of Harbour Grace, Port Grave district. Um, also, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I also want to talk about roads. Roads are a problem everywhere. And I'm here a lot in particular uh, from folks in Port Grave area, Hibbs Cove, Port Grave, Baranead. And uh, I have to say the road conditions are, are pretty uh, deplorable in that area. We're all competing for roads and for, uh, for maintenance on, on our roads throughout the province. I'm happy to say that some good road work has been done on Cranes Road and the Thicket Road in Upper Island Cove and Spaniards Bay and Riverhead um, near Harbor Grace in my district. But you know what? We need to do more with our roads. Um, it, would be, it would be great if we could fix all the roads, Mr. Speaker, but we have significant kilometers of highway in this, in this province. But I have made a promise, of course, to the constituents in this area that, you know, I will lobby and do my best to advocate for, for road work in that area. Um, as we know, the provincial government is responsible for the roadway in Port Grave and in Baranead. And, you know, I, I will continue to advocate and do everything I can to, you know, to get road maintenance down there. Also on Lighthouse Road in Port Grave, uh, Lighthouse Road, there's a lot of exciting things happening. In, in this particular area of Port Grave, Mr. Speaker. Just recently, uh, my colleague MP Ken McDonald and I were at the boat lighting festival in, in uh, Port Grave, the annual boat lighting. That same night, we were able to announce a, a joint funding announcement of $154,000 to, to be invested in Lighthouse Road to create the, light, the Greenpoint Lighting Station as a world-renowned tourism destination in Port Grave. A beautiful example of a perfect coastal community. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a picture, it's a very picturesque community, the landscaping, the ocean, and uh, of course, a lot of busy activity within our fishery. We have a lot of our inshore and offshore fishers that, uh, that live in Port Grave and, and in Baranid and those areas mm -hmm. and it's just it's an area that I'm very proud of so very very excited to see the uh, the, the um of course, the development of the Greenpoint Lighting Station. I'm also lobbying on behalf of residents down there to have Lighthouse Road paved. Oh, yeah, yeah. So again, like your roads are a number one issue, no matter where you go, no matter what d district um, throughout the province. You know, 
people want to see better roadways, and, and rightfully so. And having said that, I'm uh, also very excited to, uh, to soon bring good news about Harvey Street and Harbour Grace. Sure. Work closely, of course, with the Minister of Municipal Affairs sure. and sure. Environment on this. Sure. We've had multiple meetings. <laughs> and let me tell you, Harvey Street is a main thoroughfare in the historic town of Harbour Grace in my district, Mr. Speaker. And again, another perfect example of neglect. Uh, those were those roadways. I've often I've often compared it to playing a, a video game, Mario Kart, to uh, to try and avoid the obstacles down there. I get complaints and calls of concerns from residents often uh, with with vehicle, with vehicle damage due to the to, to the condition of the road. So I'm happy to say that we're hoping we're going to move forward on that project, working hand in hand with the town of Harbour Grace on that. Um, it, in, underground infrastructure must be replaced before new pavement can go on Harvey Street. And again, Harvey Street leads, it's a main thoroughfare, provincial road, goes through the town, and we've got great uh, private sector projects also happening in, in Harbor Grace. Take, for example, the iconic uh, Roman Catholic Cathedral down there in Bears Cove on Water Street, Mr. Speaker. I recommend a drive out to have a look. It's a historic building. Um, and I'm happy to say that it's going to be converted into, I think, North America's very first beer spa. Believe it or not, you can take a beer. I, I'm told you that you'll be beer? able to take a bath and beer. It's, it's, wow. it's, it has benefits for the body and the skin. So it's going to be very interesting to see that. And I welcome, of course, uh, those, uh, those business people to our area. Um, Craig Flynn and Brenda O'Reilly. Uh, they own the O'Reilly's and the famous Yellow Belly here on George Street in, uh, in the capital, in our capital. But uh, they're well, very excited to open up shop and start construction in, in Harbor Grace. Also, hopefully there's good ambitious plans for the, for the historic courthouse that has been closed. The, it's, a, it's a historic site there, and we're hoping to find a good purpose for that as well, Mr. Speaker. So lots of great, exciting things happening. But the people in Harbor Grace say to me, you know, there's wonderful things happening in the private sector, but we've got to have a good road to drive on. And that's right. And so, as, as the MHA, I will certainly continue advocating, working with my, working with the minister here, who is a very cooperative, I must say, uh, in, in the position. And so, hopefully, we'll have a good announcement to make soon about the infrastructure and to kick off Harvey Street. And the Minister of Transportation Works has also uh, assured me that Blacktop will, will follow this new infrastructure project for Harvey Street in Harbor Grace. Also, some, uh, some other good news to announce with our, uh, our community healthy living funds. Um, you know, the, the, we've got a lot of active kids and active seniors and residents from all ages of the spectrum. Mr. Speaker, in Harbor Grace, Port Grave, and recently I was able to announce $5,000 for the resurfacing of a basketball court in Spaniards Bay. We've got a gr wonderful group of volunteers out there on the Recreation Committee, um, and they, they've come together. Of course, it takes work to go into these applications, as you know, Mr. Speaker. It's no such thing as writing a check book and handing out money. Money doesn't grow on trees. We know that. And it takes a lot of time and dedication for these volunteers to put forth these, these, these complex applications. Um, so I'm happy to say some money coming there for the kids and for the general, po general population out there for the basketball court resurfacing. Also the Splash Center in Harbor Grace, just over $6,000 uh, to go and to support that, that organization. And again, um, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the, the strong volunteers that we have, in particular our volunteer firefighters in the District of Harbor Grace, Port of Grave, Strong Department of Bay Roberts, Upper Island Cove, Spaniards Bay, Harbor Grace, I hope I'm not missing any. Um, but you know what, they all come together. When there's an incident, when there's something happened, especially on the Veterans Memorial Highway, which is unfortunately infamous for fatalities in our, in our uh, province, you know, they all come together and they support one another. And anything I can do for those volunteers, believe me, Mr. Speaker, I am going to do. And I got to say, they step up when, you know, people are running away seeking shelter from a fire or from a horrific incident or, or an accident of some sort. It's those men and women that run in, you know, when the rest of us are seeking, right. seeking uh, safety. So I can't say enough about these volunteers. And I had the pleasure of attending the uh, firefighters ball in Bay Roberts just a couple of weeks ago. And I got to tell you, they're, they're a great group beautiful group of people and I love spending time with my volunteers, my, my uh, volunteer firefighters in our district because uh, like I said, I call them the most courageous volunteers in the world. And on that note again, it's, it's great to celebrate the new medical rescue fire unit truck that uh, I was able to help secure for the town of Upper Island Cove. And the town of Upper Island Cove, Mr. Speaker, services not only Upper Island Cove but of course Bishop's Cove and Bryan's Cove and uh, so they look after that population. They also respond to a lot of medical calls 
Mr. Speaker, because of their unique geography. Their, their response times are very quick. And so hats off to them, and I, I know they're enjoying their new, their new vehicle their new vehicle down there in Upper Island Cove, but there's more to come. Also, before I conclude, Mr. Speaker, we've got the, uh, the Summer Games for the first time in our yeah. history. Yeah. That's coming in the Bay Roberts. So, I mean, I mean, we've seen other communities host the Summer Games, but I'm happy to say we have secured a provincial Newfoundland and Labrador Summer Games, which will be happening in 2020 in the town of Bay Roberts. And of course, all the, the, the communities, the neighboring communities will also benefit. Thousands are, are expected to visit our area. In, in that 2020 for the summer games and of course that comes with an operation grant of about two hundred thousand dollars wow. and so i'm very excited to announce that mr speaker those details are not quite confirmed or official but it's coming so and again it's it's volunteer national it, i think it's the official volunteer week the proper title for that so we're celebrating our volunteers here in newfoundland and labrador and let me tell you mr speaker we have the strongest dedicated volunteers in harbor grace port of grave district wow. so i'm very proud also of course just to wrap up now uh, the, the Veterans Memorial Highway, um, over the past two years, $5 million has been invested in the veterans for safety upgrades, such as rubble strips, um, you know, such as the climbing lanes. As we know, it's, it's currently, a, you know, it's, it's not a divided highway at this point, but they're going to add in some climbing lanes. Uh, you know, a lot of feedback on that road, a lot of concerns about that road, and I'm happy to say we're doing the best we can. And, and I will always advocate for the people of Harbour Grace, Port of Grave, Mr. Speaker. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's how we all come here. We're all elected by the people who put us in these seats to represent th represent them, their concerns, their priorities, and it is an absolute honor. And on that note, Mr. Speaker, I'll take my seat, but again, $6.2 million to be awarded, of course, has been awarded to JMJ Holdings to replace the long overdue Coley's Point Primary School. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud of that one and very excited and construction ready to kick off, I'm, I'm told, tomorrow morning to start yeah. mobilizing. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will take my seat, and again, always a pleasure to speak in this honorable house. Thank you.